Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Rajini Samuel, Associate Professor of Biochemistry, Sri Satya Sai Medical College and Research Institute, Chennai, India. My research topic is application of cardiac hypothesis in novel ECG interpretation method for the third edition of Cardiology World Conference, Cardio 2022. ECG interpretation. ECG is one of the oldest and most important diagnostic tool for the diagnosis of coronary artery disease. Yet the basic physics principle of ECG is not clearly understood and its interpretation remains an arduous task. The pattern memorization method is commonly used to interpret and analyze the shape of the ECG waves. The basic principle using vector concepts are not frequently taught and utilized to analyze each ECG tracing. The concept of cardiac vector describes the electrical activity of the heart and the equilateral triangle model with heart at the center of the homogeneous volume spherical conductor was first described by Enthoven even before a century, but he never published a complete detailed description of the same. The complete heart lead vector relationship using cardiac vector and Enthoven circular triangle hypothesis was explained in detail by myself in the previous research articles. In the x-axis reference system, the center point denotes the origin. In this diagram, the red arrow denotes a cardiac vector. If a perpendicular line is drawn from the tip of the cardiac vector into the respective leads, then the corresponding segment in the leads represents the magnitude of the voltage recorded in the leads. Lead 1, 2 and 3 belong to bipolar limb leads and AVR, AVL and AVF belong to unipolar limb leads. So the unipolar and bipolar limb leads can be related using these equations. Enthoven circular triangle hypothesis in the x-axis reference system of ECG plot the net voltages of bipolar limb leads and connect them. Similarly, plot the net voltages of unipolar limb leads and connect them. Each forms equilateral triangles. The equilateral triangle can be converted into a circle. The orientation of the circle is the same for both the bipolar and unipolar limb leads because the electrode position is same right arm, left arm and left leg for both of them and they record the same electrical field of the heart in a different view but the magnification is different higher for bipolar limb leads because the bipolar and unipolar limb leads have different resistance higher for bipolar limb leads the voltage recorded by the electrodes lead 1 2 3 and avr avl and avf denoting the right arm left arm and left leg are the vertices of an electrical equilateral triangle and not an anatomical triangle from the diagram it is very clear the orientation of the circle is same for both the unipolar and bipolar but only the magnification is different because they have different resistance each circle have same origin same orientation but different radii because bipolar and unipolar limb leads have different resistance ratio of the resistance 4 by 3 hence the ratio of the area of the two circles always constant equal to 4 by 3 the square of square root of 4 by 3 is 1.154 the ratio of the radii is 1.154 now you multiply each unipolar limb lead voltages by the correction factor 1.154 and then you plot. Now the two equilateral triangle lie on the same circle. So from the diagram very clear the two equilateral triangle lie on the same circle after applying the correction factor 1.154. So each cardiac wave can be represented in the form of circles in the x-axis reference system. The diameter of the circle denotes the cardiac vector, the resultant vector. The perimeter circumference of the circle denotes the electrical field of the heart with heart at the center of the circle. So thus heart is at the center of the electrical field which it generates the right arm, left arm and left leg are the extensions of electric field which was compared by Enthoven to a homogeneous volume spherical conductor with heart at the center of the sphere. The heart in zero potential is at the origin in the center of the x-axis reference system. When the heart acquires certain potential during depolarization and depolarization, the triangle gets shifted but the equilateral triangle shape of the triangle remains the same in any of the four quadrants of the x-axis of our system. Angle determination in ECG, voltage recorded in a particular lead in ECG is due to the projection of hot vector on lead vector. So angle determination can be done using the voltage recorded in AVF and lead 1. AVF belongs to unipolar and lead 1 belongs to bipolar. So this has to be corrected. So tan alpha is equal to 1.154 into AVF divided by lead 1. 1.154 denotes the correction factor applied for the difference in resistance between the bipolar and unipolar limb leads. 
ECG leads. The standard ECG leads cons consist of three different sets of leads. Bipolar leads 1, 2, 3. Unipolar AVR, A AVL and AVF recorded through the changing Goldberger center terminal and unipolar precordial V1 to V6 recorded through the stable Wilson center terminal. An electrode placed on the right leg acts as the ground for all the leads which serves as a reference electrode. The augmentations 3 by 2 are 50 percent higher for leads recorded through Goldberger Center Terminal GCT compared with the leads recorded through WCT Wilson Center Terminal. The overall magnitude of voltage recorded in bipolar limb leads will be higher than the unipolar limb leads because of their difference in the resistance. Ratio of the resistance 4 by 3. So we can apply Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. The resistance increases. Voltage also will increase. Now I will discuss about the formulation of my cardio vector theory. So before that I will discuss about the basic concepts in vector algebra. Vector has both magnitude and direction. Scalar has only magnitude and no direction. The unit vector is a vector quantity whose magnitude is 1 and has direction only. From the triangle ABC, right angle triangle, sin theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse, cos theta is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse, tan theta is sin theta by cos theta. So tan A is equal to opposite side divided by adjacent side. If two vectors are multiplied and the product is a scalar quantity, then denotes scalar or dot product. So from the diagram, the OH denotes hot vector, OH denotes lead vector, hot vector is projected onto lead vector. So if a perpendicular line is drawn from the tip of the hot vector, it will meet at the point V. So OV denotes the voltage recorded in the particular lead. So from the diagram, we can derive cos alpha is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse. So if you apply, we will be getting the result OV is equal to OH cos alpha. OV denotes the voltage recorded in the particular lead. So OV is equal to OH cos alpha. So lead vector concept. So vector is equal to vector's magnitude into unit vector. So OL vector is equal to OL into OL unit vector. The unit vector has no unit and it is a dimensionless quantity. If the magnitude of the vector is taken as 1, suppose if we take the magnitude as 1, then OL vector is equal to 1 into OL unit vector. So lead vector OL vector is a unit vector multiplied by magnitude of 1 and so it is measured in meter. This denotes the orientation of the electrode. The lead vector also has magnitude strength but this can be compared relatively with other lead vectors. So I have taken the bipolar limb lead as 1 because bipolar limb lead was in, first introduced in ECG. So if I, if I have taken the magnitude of the bipolar limb lead as 1, the strength of the other lead can be relatively compared. So the unipolar limited strength will not be 1 and it can be com compared or corrected using the correction factor. Similarly, the unipolar limb leads and unipolar precordial lead strength can be compared using the augmentation factor. So scalar or dot product, it is equal to the product of the magnitudes of the two vectors and the cosine of the smallest angle between them. So scalar or dot product between hot vector and lead vector. I am going to apply scalar or dot product mathematics concepts in ECG. So H OH vector dot OL vector is equal to OH into OL into cos alpha. So previously I discussed about the lead vector concept. So if you have taken the magnitude of OL as 1, then we will get the result H dot L equal to OH cos alpha. H vector dot L unit vector is equal to OH cos alpha. This unit vector denotes magnitude 1 into unit vector. So previous slide I discussed about that. So from this relation very clear, the cardiac hypothesis states that voltage recorded in a particular lead is a result of dot product between cardiac vector measured in volt per meter and lead vector measured in meter. Hence voltage is a scalar quantity. So H dot L equal to OH cos alpha, voltage recorded in a particular lead depends both on, on the magnitude and direction of the cardiac vector but only on the direction of the lead vector. So cardiac vector is electrical field vector dimension volt per meter and lead vector in meter denotes the orientation of the electrode position. The magnitude and orientation of lead hot vector with lead vector will cause deflections in the ECG voltage in the y-axis resulting in the formation of ECG waves. If the magnitude of vector P, Q, R, S, T and S, T vector are high, the voltage recorded will will also be high and vice versa. So from this table, it is very clear as the angle in between cardiac and lead vector increases, 
voltage recorded in the particular lead will decrease. As the angle increases, cost value will decrease. If a conductor is parallel to a particular lead, ECG will record maximum deflection because cost zero is one. If a conductor is perpendicular to a particular lead, the net impression on the lead will either be equiphasic or non deflection because cost 90 is zero. Voltage recorded will be positive if both the vectors are in the same direction and negative if both the vectors are moving away in opposite direction because cost value is negative for obtuse angle. Example, the unipolar lead AVR and frequent adjust lead V1 will be usually negative because the heart vector is moving away from the electrode placed. Normal, the certain heart vector is usually parallel to lead 2 and so it is used as a rhythm strip, continuously recorded for 10 seconds to determine the heart rate and rhythm. No ECG deflections are recorded in cardiac arrest or ACE stroll because the magnitude of the vector is zero. Cardiac vector properties. The velocity of the cardiac vector is related with time in the x-axis of ECG. If the cardiac vector velocity is low, the conduction time will increase, resulting in wider waves. If the cardiac vector velocity is high, conduction time will decrease, resulting in narrow waves. The ECG intervals will be prolonged if the cardiac vector velocity is lower or the distance traveled by the vector is increased. Example, any enlargement or thickness. The ECG intervals will be shortened if the cardiac vector velocity is increased or the distance traveled by the vector is shortened. Example, any bypass route or accessory pathway. Application of cardiac vector hypothesis in ECG tracing. The normal QRS vector axis from minus 30 to 90 degree. The normal TY axis from 0 and 90 degree. It means the left lower quadrant. The frontal plane TY axis similarly directed to the frontal plane QRS axis. Therefore, TY axis must be considered in relationship to the QRS axis. The normal QRS angle does not exist 60 degree. It is a well known fact in ECG. The T vector move away from the affected region. In intraventricular conduction defect, duration of the QRS complex prolonged. So the T vector move away from the QRS vector due to secondary phenomenon and they do not indicate primary abnormality. During ischemia, blood flow is decreased. So the heart muscle does not die because blood flow is sufficient to maintain life of the myocardium but not sufficient to cause repolarization. More blood is needed to repolarize than to depolarize. Because T wave is produced by repolarization of the ventricles, ischemia causes deviation of the T wave axis. If the leads are oriented towards the ischemic region, T wave inversion, negative deflection results and the T wave vector will not be in the left lower quadrant and it will be located in the other quadrant. Current of injury vector, ST segment is isoelectric period in the ECG. When the myocardium of the heart is injured, current flows between pathologically depolarized and normally polarized areas resulting in leakage of current. This is called current of injury. The ST vector, the current of injury vector, they move towards the injured surface. If the leads are oriented towards the current of injury vector, it results in positive deflection resulting in ST elevation. Reciprocal ST depression, negative deflection will be seen in leads oriented away from the current of injury vector. In sub intercardial infarction, ST segment and DV changes will be negative, which is opposite to those associated with transported or sub epicardial infarction. ST segment depression is present because the direction of the current of injury vector is from epicardial to endocardium. Direction is changed. Infarction. QRS vector denotes the ventricular depolarization. In myocardial infarction, the tissue is necro, so it is electrically linear and does not get depolarized. This is called electrical hole. The electrodes oriented towards this will record the activation of the opposite ventricular wall. The QRS deflection will be negative. Pathological Q waves will be seen oriented towards the wall of the heart having myocardial infarction. The QRS vector move away from the infarcted or necrosed region. Deviation of the cardiac vector. Following the fully evolved phase of acute myocardial infarction, there is a gradual resolution of the abnormalities. This is a chronic stabilized phase. Here, the elevated ST segment gradually returns to waistline, becoming predominantly isoelectric once again. The inverted T wave gradually regains its positivity. Even the QRS complex may regain some of its previous positivity. So, the technical errors, the same cardiac hypothesis can be explained to, to find out the errors in due to technical errors. The reversal of the leads and the misplacement of the leads is a common but underreported technical error, which can hinder proper ECG interpretation. For example, the lead is reversed, the direction of the lead vector is opposite. So the voltage will be wrongly recorded as negative due to the technical error. Similarly, if the pre-recorded leads are not placed in correct position, the magnitude of heart vector will be different and the voltage recorded is false value, which may sometimes mimic pathologies leading to misdiagnosis. So novel ECG interpretation method, each one can be represented in the form of circles. Circles, when the angle between the QRS T and T circle increases, it denotes ischemia. The voltage will be higher if the size of the circle is larger. An ST segment is isoelectric period, so no circle should be formed. The formation of circle and magnitude increases denote the amount of myocardial injury. 
So QRS circle can form up to minus 30 degree. So the same vector theory can be applied to explain, explain each and every tracing of ECG. And the, and the representative of the resultant vector in the form of circle can be applied to diagnose most of the common cardiac diseases. I have shown four examples. So in the first example, QRS and T circle are constructed for this ECG graph. Both the QRS and T circle are in the normal axis. So values are taken from this table. So normal QRS and T angle. The second graph, the QRS axis is normal, but the T wave axis is not located in the left lower quadrant. So T wave axis is deviating away from the inferior wall, negative in lead 3 and AVF. So inferior wall ischemia. So values are taken from this graph. T wave is negative in lead 3 and AVF. So in ischemia, T vector will move away from the affected wall. So this denotes the primary change. The second example, SC elevation is seen in the leads 2, 3, AVF, QRS circle and, T, and the SC circle is constructed. So ST is isoelectric period told you. So no circle should be formed. So ST circle is formed. This indicates the amount of myocardial injury. So values are taken from this graph. ST current of injury vector is towards the inferior wall leads. The QRS vector is not deviated because the inferior wall is not infarcted. And for the example, intraventricular conduction defect, the QRS and T circles are constructed. The T circle is moving away from the QRS due to secondary changes. QRS duration is prolonged. So conclusion, the present ECG interpretation mainly depends on memory of the morphological changes in ECG waves. Many of the medical students and even most of the specialist doctors find it difficult to understand the concept of ECG. The better understanding of the vector principle and the application of contact hypothesis in each ECG tracing helps to overcome the arduous task of ECG interpretation. So the combination of the dual lead ECG with this resultant guide vector represented by circle provided the optimum approach to ECG interpretation resulting in saving millions of lives of cardiac patients. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to present my research findings in this conference. Thank you. And these are my references.